urgently in a higher value, lower cost option. That's right. Mr Speaker. Question number seven, Marama Davidson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Women and asks, what is the most recent data she's received on the gender pay gap? Tana kwe, Mr Speaker. Tana kwe the most recent data I've seen, seen shows that nationally women's median hourly earnings are 9.4 per cent lower than men's. Despite consistent improvement in the gender pay gap in the early 2000s, in recent years, in fact over the past decade, progress on closing the gender pay gap has stagnated. Uh, women continue to be paid less than men, and as of yesterday, Women in New Zealand are effectively working for free to the rest, for the rest of the year. Mr. Speaker, how does the gender pay gap specifically affect Māori and Pacifica women? The pay gap is even worse for Māori, Pacific women, for Asian New Zealanders and women of colour. According to Statistics New Zealand, the median hourly earnings for Māori, Pacifica and Asian women are between 18 and 21 per cent lower than they are for men for the same quality of work, even taking into account education, hours worked, life experience, all of those factors. There's still this huge gap. If we look at the average, it's even worse. For Māori, it's close to 23 per cent. For Pacifica women, it's nearly 28 per cent. What's clear is that Māori, Pacifica women and women of colour have been working for free this year for much longer than the average woman. That's not fair and that's not right. What is she planning to do to end the gender pay gap? Thank you, Mr Speaker. This government is committed to undertaking the work that is necessary to end structural discrimination, particularly against women, tangata whenua, waihini, Pacifica and women of colour. This government recognises that everyone in society is better off when we all receive fair pay for their contribution and their work. So we've started by halting the previous government's legislation that would have made it harder for women to find a clear pathway to equal pay. We'll be bringing fresh legislation into this House that will implement the agreed principles of the Joint Working Group on pay equity. We will lead by example by closing the pay gap in the core public service with a particular focus on Māori and Pacifica women. And we'll be working with the private sector because there are many businesses that are already seeing the productivity benefits of measuring and closing the gender pay gap. We want to help other businesses catch up with that. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, supplementary, Mr. Speaker, uh, can the minister please confirm that the median pay gap, uh, median gender pay gap, of, uh, was over 12 per cent earlier this year, but has closed to just over 9 per cent uh, very recently? And will she be getting a 3 per cent drop in the gender pay gap and within the next six months? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Depending, there are different ways of measuring it, and so if you measure the average pay gap. It's 13.1 per cent. The median pay gap is 9.4 per cent. I'm not aware of the accuracy of the figures that member has proposed, but I'll certainly be talking to my ministry to see if that is correct. And I'm confident that with an ambitious government that is committed to equality and not afraid of talking about the hard issues, we will make enormous progress. Question number eight. The Honourable Simon Brittles. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Regional Economic Development. 